So here's another lesion that was from a joint. You can tell right away it's made of cartilage. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful blue highland cartilage. That color is fantastic, isn't it? Sometimes you get lucky and the cut and the stain are just right and the cartilage just looks amazing. Other days it doesn't work out so well, just depends. But this one worked out. And I think part of why it worked out is a lot of times when we see cartilage, it's in bone and it really messes up the sections. We got a couple folds there. There are some little bits of bone here, but this was actually a lesion in the, the soft tissue and the synovium right around like the knee joint, not involving the bone. But that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's always important to know the radiology, especially if you see bone or cartilage in a lesion. The next thing I want to know is, is this lesion arising on the top of the bone or growing out of the underlying bone, or is it purely in soft tissue away from the bone? Because a lot of times that's going to really change the way I approach a case for bone, a bone producing or, or cartilage producing lesion. There are different considerations and different things that I'm going to think about and say in my report um, based on whether it's in the bone or not. And sometimes you don't have that information. And there have been times where I have to say, well, especially like I feel like I see that often like in the fingers or toes where someone will go in, they think it's a little soft tissue mass. They scrape out some pieces. I see some bone and cartilage, but it's not clear to me if this is arising totally in the soft tissue, if it's growing off the outer cortical surface of the phalanx bone, or if it's actually there down in the bone. And unless you have the operative note or imaging studies, you can't always tell. And I've had occasionally had to say, well, here's what I'm seeing. And it's really important actually to find out if this is in the bone or not, especially if it's a consult or something and you don't have all the history. So those are always un uncomfortable things to deal with. But here, I'll tell you, this is not in the bone, even though it's producing a little bit of bone and it's not been decaled, that's why without decalcification, that's why the bone's very purple and fractured. And you can see where the bone's coming from. The cartilage itself is actually ossifying, right? You get a nodule of cartilage right here, and it's beginning to produce some bone. And that happens sometimes. Cartilage lesions have a tendency to get calcified and, and ossified. All right, so from low power, though, we've got a big, huge mass of cartilage here. But also we got, where is it? Ah, there multiple little kind of discrete islands in a background of reactive kind of fibrous and myxoid tissue. So what is this? These multiple islands of cartilage that are benign appearing. This condition is called um, synovial chondromatosis. Very good. This is synovial chondromatosis. One thing that helps me is that I've got multiple little islands like I showed you from low power. The other thing is that when you get closer, the cells do the kind of same thing. They cluster into these little little proliferative islands or nodules or kind of clonal islands. You can see some of this kind of clustering in reactive cartilage like in, in osteoarthritis, degenerative joint disease. Occasionally you can see that, um, but I feel like the mo it's the most dramatic in um, synovial chondromatosis, these little proliferating clonal nodules of chondrocytes. And it's a little hard to be able to see the nuclear features because the background matrix is so blue it often obscures, but I'll try to get it in focus here. And sometimes chondrocytes, they their nucleus turns into like a little pur dark purple dot, and you can't even see the nuclear features at all. But here we can see them, but they've got little tiny round or maybe some occasionally bean-shaped little bland nuclei sitting in those little lacunar spaces. Pretty awesome to be able to look at up close here. So even though it is more cellular than a cartilage tumor, like in the, inside the bone would, would tend to be um, in this setting, that cellularity doesn't bother me at all, personally. So that's synovial chondromatosis, and it's got some calcifications there in it. And then I also think this like reminds me of like the surface of an alien planet or something like dried mm -hmm. up or dried up riverbeds in the desert. You know, if you have a good imagination, mm -hmm. you can make something out of this. They make wallpaper, I think. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, maybe I've been doing this too long. Here we go. If you have like wet paint on uh, silk, ooh, yeah, salt grains on it, and the salt absorbs the paint from it, and sort of creates these halos, like. And it looks like this. It looks like this. That is cool. We're gonna have to. I want to. Do you have some of this artwork that you've done at home? I I did it in grade school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have it, but uh, I can find. Somewhat it. at home, if yeah. you're watching this online. Please post a picture of your artwork or post a link to it in the comments so we can see the silk silk painting. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever done that. That sounds really awesome.
I thought you were going to go with the direction of like the, you know, when you pour the paint, the dirty pour, where they mm -hmm. pour the acrylic on the, you know, like, like I've got a couple of here from that Dr. Eva Wojcik from uh, Loyola has kindly donated to my collection. And it reminds me very much of this. Mm -hmm. So anyway. All right. Well, we've talked about it enough, but wow. If you don't like this, I don't know. No one's going to still be watching this video after an hour if they don't like this. So I think everyone who's left watching the video, they'll find appreciation. All right. Last case.